Well, sorry about that. We got a call going in, in the middle, so now we have to have part two. Okay, I was ending that video with citizen scientists work, citizen scientists work. Citizen scientists are doing so much work, it's almost unbelievable. But And, and if you want to do some citizen science, you can too. Uh, the information I'm going to be talking about has a citizen science project uh, that goes along with it. And, you know, there's also uh, citizen science work. And, and basically what this is, citizen scientists work in astronomy, there's a lot of it. Telescopes have taken billions and billions of images that people haven't actually gotten to to look through. They haven't actually gotten there to survey. They haven't ever actually put human eyes or computer eyes or any eyes on the, that film or that image since it's been taken. And so what happens is these people are called citizen scientists because they know that once they get in there they're going to be doing science. Go in there, look at, or, or given the opportunity to look at certain images and they go through there and they discover what they want to discover. And in this case, there was uh, an amateur astronomer discovers 34 paired off brown, brown dwarf stars. Paired off. 34 paired off brown dwarf stars. You know, there's always been a discussion about brown dwarfs, all this, that, the other way, thing, and all about that. You know, and it still is a discussion that needs to be talked about because even in this article, there's, there's some glaring information that comes out of this, this article here that kind of puts our situation here, our sun situation, uh, in this odd, oddball situation, which uh, according to this article, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So amateur astronomer discovers 34 paired off failed stars in Brown Dwarf Project. Uh, citizen science, more than 12 times the mass of Jupiter are these brown dwarfs, so less than half the mass of the sun. So a brown dwarf is 12 times the size of Jupiter, but it's half the mass of the sun. So it was a failed star. It was never able to get the, the gravity compaction strong enough to start turning those uh, uh, hydrogen uh, hydrogen particles into helium. Boom. The fuel fission of the star hydrogen to helium. I believe that, that it is. So once you can get the hydrogen to helium uh, production, you got a popping off star. And, and Jupiter and these brown dwarf stars just never got the the, the weight together to start popping those uh, hydrogen uh, particles off. Um, this is about Aaron Meisner of the National Science Foundation's National Optical Infrared Astronomy Research Laboratory. <laughs> Aaron Meisner of the National Science Foundation's National Optical Infrared Astronomy Research Laboratory, or NOIR Lab, NOR Lab has put out this Backyard Worlds colon Planet Nine Project, Planet Nine Project, Planet Nine Object. Okay, so they're out there looking, they're out there looking for these brown dwarfs. Planet Nine, I'm sure that they're looking for a brown dwarf specifically. So this gentleman right here, uh, Kiwi, uh, bum, 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 bum. I think I'm missing the darn page. Frank Kiwi is a part of this Project Nine, Planet Nine project, and he's done all these discoveries. But there's some interesting information about the discoveries. Okay, so he's made 34 whatever number of discoveries, right? And each each of the brown dwarfs, as in this article states, the each brown dwarf that has been discovered is connected to a white dwarf. A white dwarf is the product of a of a sun-like star that has burned out of all of its fuel. So our sun will probably turn into a white dwarf at the end of its age. And so Frank Kiwi's out there discovering all these brown dwarfs and they're all of them matched up with the white dwarf. And here's the next bit of information. Is the distances in, uh, the uh, distances from, distances from, where did it go? Okay, so we're gonna give a roundabout number because that page has just come up missing. Did it fly in the trash? I don't see it in the trash. I don't see it in the trash. Okay, so Frank Kiwi, and I hope Frank that is actually your name. I know Kiwi is the second name. Uh, Frank Kiwi discovered these uh, brown dwarfs, and then he paired them with white dwarfs. Everyone had a white dwarf. And we had the uh, closest distance and farthest distance. I think it goes something like this. So the closest distance between the brown dwarf and the white dwarf was... Let's just say 1500 AU. 1500 AU. 1500 AU 
A, an AU is 93 million miles. It's a distance from the Earth to the Sun, so it was 1,500. Uh, we can go look up the, that, that article to be sure what the numbers are. And then the next number was something like, and the farthest one was 2,800 or 3,000 AU or 5,000 AU. Okay, that's key. It's key because of this. Because, okay, we have uh, all these brown dwarfs that were discovered. They were found to have a partner that was a white dwarf. And they uh, were found to have distances from their partner of certain, certain distances. Well, our sun's closest relation to its closest star is 253,000 AU away. Okay? So, our sun, which is going to, at the end of its life, more than likely turn into a white dwarf, the sun-like stars turn into white dwarfs. And if many and our high percentages of white dwarfs end up having these partner brown dwarfs, where do they come from and where are they and what makes it so hard? When you connect in the information that the, the article includes that oh, Alpha Centauri, the closest star, is over 253,000 AUs away, you know that it's just leaving this gaping hole of somewhere between 253,000 AUs away and 2300 AU away is again our our supposed planet nine, it's, which scientists and citizen scientists are obviously working hardly hard 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 on it. I've been through it. I've I've looked through wise photos. I've looked through enough photos. I I I can say I looked through photos. But you got to be a dedicated photo looker if you're going to look through photos for 10 years of your life. But it requires folks to have that first inkling, at least, to get on board as citizen science. Go dive into those photos and burn out looking through 1,000, 10,000 photos and maybe making a discovery or two. Uh, the IASC, the International Astro... The IAS, the International Astronomical Search Collaboration, allows member registered folks and teams to uh, access PanSTARS telescope on Hawaii's uh, imaging shots to find new asteroids. So there's another citizen project, the IASC, International Astronomical Search Collaboration. I don't know if it's .edu or not, but I think if you just search International Astronomical Research Collaboration, IASC, you're going to come up with it. And you, as a citizen science, can get in there, download Astrometrica, woo, that's a, that's a software program in itself, and get some images, sign up for a month. You only have to sign up like in March, and you'll get into the project in June. It takes It's backed up a couple of months. And then you have this one now, this Backyard Worlds uh, Project 9 project, the Backyard Worlds Planet 9 project. If you want to, want to join, search, and you can probably find a way to join up. And they become a citizen scientist too. And this ain't nothing to joke about, even though it's being done inside the dog, hot dog food truck and all that. Ah, put a little together astronomy news together. Now it's your job to come back in the comments section and tell me if this tickled your fancy or if you want to hear more or if you want something else. Our latest image from Cosmic Obsession Kerrville Observatory is at Abel 39 that I posted a short clip of. Hopefully the resolution will work itself out. You can always hop over to Cosmic Obsession Kerrville on Facebook. It's really the best place to get all the videos. Or uh, ask to join my messenger, my Facebook messenger, where I upload all the latest Cosmic Obsession Kerbal Observatory images right into a messenger. And there's a group of folks who enjoy them as soon as I get them. Other than that, it is Thursday, 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 7-7. 7 7 7-7-2022. We hope you're going to have a great afternoon. If you're in Tomball area, 77375, if you're in my area, if you happen to be in Texas, happen to be in Tomball, happen to be outside of Houston, Texas, come on down to Dexter Dog and get your, get your, get your, get your river dog from me, your friend Francis Walsh, right here inside Dexter Dogs at 403 East, 403 East Main Street, Tomball, Texas, 77375. I'm out of here for now. See ya.